everybody. Uh, I'm uh, Daniel Gerge. I'm an uh, Android engineer uh, and uh, tier. And uh, uh, we have an, uh, so what we do is uh, we have an app that uh, offers small electric vehicles to rent by the minute, such as uh, electric scooters, mopeds, and bicycles. And uh, we had some challenges uh, regarding uh, state handling and uh, more specifically, they were gathering around the so-called uh, right state. And uh, to give you some context about what right state is, I would like to invite you to a time travel to the beginnings of our application, because at that point, it was uh, super simple. Basically, uh, we had only two states. The one is the default on the left, where you uh, had no ride. You could uh, browse the map. You could uh, search for a vehicle and uh, you could eventually uh, use it to start a ride. And then you started uh, the ride. You could uh, get transferred to this other state uh, on the right uh, where you can uh, interact with only the one vehicle that uh, you are renting. And then you could stop the ride and uh, you could get back to this uh, default state. And uh, if you look at this from a pragmatic uh, point of view, you can uh, see just how simple this is. and. Uh, uh, I really want to emphasize that uh, because at the beginning it was uh, perfectly reasonable to go with a simple solution and uh, not to implement anything uh, complex or sophisticated. So uh, we were really happy with that. Uh, but then a product came to us and uh, asked if uh, we could uh, implement this feature uh, called uh, Pose Ride. And we said, yeah, sure. And what it did is just uh, slightly uh, extended the, the set of uh, states. By the way, uh, what a post ride means is that the vehicle is locked, but uh, it still belongs to you. You still rent it. It comes in really handy when you have to uh, go into the store or something. Uh, so yeah, uh, the set of uh, states uh, expanded just a bit. And uh, then we uh, implemented another uh, cool feature called uh, user battery swapping. And uh, what it does, it uh, allows users to go to a swap spot where there's this uh, power box and the user can uh, swap the depleted uh, battery of the vehicle with a fully charged one from the power box. And uh, it helps us, helps the environment. It's a win-win situation. And then we thought that, uh, hey, what if uh, we could uh, offer rides completely uh, free of charge if the user is willing to swap the battery? And uh, uh, yeah, this sounds really cool, but uh, what it would do is uh, complicate uh, things for us even further. And then we thought of, hey, what if we uh, created a feature where users could uh, select any vehicle on the map and uh, reserve it uh, for themselves? So why uh, they are working towards it, other users uh, won't uh, steal it uh, away from them. And as you can see, uh, this, this uh, chart is uh, pretty uh, different uh, compared to the first diagram. So at that point, as we were uh, maintaining our uh, current features and we were thinking about how we would uh, add uh, new features uh, to this system, we ran into some uh, problems, unfortunately. Uh, namely that our code was kind of a natural evolution uh, from a small to a large set of features it was uh, becoming uh, less maintainable, less uh, readable. It was becoming harder and harder to contribute and to uh, introduce uh, new features. So what we did at that point is uh, to just uh, try and sit down and, uh, and try to phrase what the exact uh, problems are. And uh, uh, what we uh, came up with is that the issues were uh, that we had uh, no clean representation of right states. We had no single source of truth and uh, the flows were hard to extend. And to uh, dig into these a uh, little uh, deeper, let's start with uh, uh, no clean representation of right states. Uh, as you can see here, uh, this example, what we had is was just uh, one single flat class with uh, mostly nullable fields. Um, for example, if, uh, uh, if you are uh, in a reservation, when that reservation would expire, if you have already started a ride, when did that ride start? Or uh, if you finished your ride, how much uh, was the cost exactly? 
and uh, as you can see, the fields are mostly nullable. And uh, yeah, it was it was uh, pretty bad because if a new joiner were to look at it, they would have uh, probably no idea which uh, fields are valid in a uh, which state. And uh, so obviously one uh, issue that is almost uh, screaming uh, from the screen is uh, the lack of uh, subclasses. But uh, uh, there was another issue, which uh, maybe uh, is not so apparent, but also pretty severe, is that uh, when you look at uh, this, this field, the final cost, which is uh, obviously only available after uh, your ride is finished, uh, at that point, we were thinking that that kind of implies the existence of an ended ride state. But do we, do we really uh, have that? And, and only at that point did we realize that we don't actually know uh, what ride state means. We, we don't, don't actually know the boundaries, the scope of it. Because uh, uh, if you look at uh, this from the uh, data or product point of view, having an ended ride uh, state so-called makes sense because that's the life cycle uh, of ride. But if you want to look at this from an application behavior uh, point of view, uh, how does the app look like in certain states? What can you do with the app? Then uh, it becomes apparent that it doesn't actually make sense to have an ended ride state because it is pretty much the same as the no ride state. So uh, spoiler alert, uh, we, we ended up uh, removing this and, and how we handled uh, the data associated with it is uh, something I will circle back to later. So at that point, um, we were now uh, confident in uh, knowing what the problems are and uh, it was time to get her around uh, a whiteboard and start designing uh, some solutions. So uh, yeah, the first one to tackle was the uh, proper domain representation of flight states. And uh, as the first step, we wanted to make sure we have uh, clean boundaries of our state handling. So we, as I said, we removed uh, uh, any fields that were associated with this uh, ended ride. And uh, the other one is we, we wanted to create a type hierarchy to represent uh, our states. And yeah, with this, uh, you have a lot of uh, options to choose from. Uh, you can just go with a, a simple CVET class, uh, that has some advantages and disadvantages. It's uh, not so flexible having to um, list all the subclasses in one module, but for exchange, you get uh, safe uh, exhaustive branching. We can just uh, go with an abstract class. Really, uh, I think uh, ju just do whatever works uh, for your project. It, there, there is no one golden standard here. What we ended up doing uh, was kind of a fairly regular sealed class and uh, it became much more readable, much more uh, clear and uh, the, the mass of uh, nullable fields was over. So getting back to our uh, problem definitions, uh, we, we had a, a design for uh, domain representation of right states that we, that we were satisfied with and uh, now, it's, now it's time to, to tackle uh, these two, having uh, no single source of truth. For that, at first, we just uh, came up with a kind of an expectation that uh, whatever solution we end up uh, implementing, it uh, has to have one single entity that owns the state. And for uh, extendability, we, we wanted to make sure that the solution we will uh, design will be scalable. And, and uh, what, it mean, what it meant in practice for us is that uh, as we add more and more new features to our uh, ride system, there is uh, no single entity that uh, keeps on growing with it because uh, that is a recipe for a gut class and uh, we wanted to avoid it, obviously. And uh, at first, it seemed uh, challenging to come up with a solution that satisfies both of these criteria. But then we remembered uh, something that everybody learns in college, but uh, later tends not to use it. And uh, obviously uh, it's the state machine. Um, so for the state machine, obviously uh, you need states, we have that. And uh, that was uh, time for introducing another term in our uh, nomenclature, namely uh, actions. 
So what an action basically uh, is for us is a user initiated uh, state change. It has one input, the, the current state, the old state, and uh, it has one main output, which obviously is, is uh, the other state, the new state, and it has an uh, other output, uh, which is uh, uh, what we called result, which uh, can be any piece of data that is uh, not uh, in the boundaries of uh, state handling. And that, uh, that came in really handy with uh, the uh, Android, for example, because we could use that to, to pass uh, any kind of data such as final cost that is needed for us, but not associated with the state handling. And uh, if, if you look at the code representation of the action, it is uh, fairly straightforward, just uh, an abstract class with, with one exposed function that takes the current state as input and the composite object of uh, the new state and the result as output. And as you can see, we are using uh, Rx Java here. And uh, the reason for that is we had uh, Rx Java throughout our application, but uh, this whole approach should work with uh, core routines as well, or, or uh, even with uh, synchronous functions. And uh, to take a look at the example uh, of uh, how you can actually uh, implement an action into this framework, it, it was also uh, super straightforward for Android action. We just uh, injected our network client and uh, performed the network request and uh, met the response. In the case of Android, we know that if it, if it uh, was successful, the new state would be no ride and uh, the result object was just something that we could uh, map from the network uh, response. So uh, now we have our states, now we have our actions, and uh, now it was time to design the glue that would uh, hold all these together. And uh, this is obviously the state machine itself. And uh, how we ended up doing it is, uh, at first, just uh, declare uh, a buffer uh, that would uh, hold uh, the state uh, for us. We, we started off with just a simple uh, behavior subject for that. And uh, for per performing actions, what we did is we exposed the function uh, on our state machine that would uh, take an action object as an input. And uh, what it would do is, uh, at first feed the current uh, or uh, fetch the current uh, state from the subject and uh, uh, then feed it to our action. And uh, that would actually uh, perform uh, any, any operations associated with detection, such as a network call. And uh, if it was successful, then we uh, store the new, new state in our buffer and then we would just uh, return the result object. And uh, yeah, it turned out uh, to be a pretty uh, straightforward solution. And uh, as you can see, there is no error handling uh, on this, this uh, code. And the reason for that is uh, we just relied on Rx Java's uh, on error branch to, well, to both to make sure that if the action were to fail, then the, the right state uh, wouldn't be updated and uh, also that the error would just uh, propagate uh, downstream. So uh, yeah, uh, at that point, we, we had a design uh, uh, for both the uh, state actions and the state machine that we were uh, pretty satisfied with. We thought it could uh, work, but uh, then came some uh, tough questions is that how would we take those uh, designs from the whiteboard and introduce it uh, in our code base. And uh, it, was it was challenging for us because at Tier we have uh, multiple teams working on uh, multiple areas of the applications, creating new features and making uh, existing ones uh, better. And uh, for that reason, we have uh, frequent releases uh, to make sure that uh, we can get these changes to the users. And uh, because of that, we, we couldn't just uh, stop the word. We couldn't uh, ask that hey, please don't release for uh, three or four weeks because uh, we have this huge refactor uh, going on. And uh, we also couldn't uh, introduce large uh, pull requests because uh, that would uh, carry risks. And uh, 
uh, that would be hard to review and uh, you would have to rebase all the time. So really the only uh, tool we had uh, left is to, to introduce everything incrementally. And uh, for that, we collected uh, the steps that uh, we have to do. First, we have to introduce the uh, new refactored uh, state model. And uh, this one turned out to be uh, fairly easy. We thought that uh, we saw that uh, this could be done with a single uh, pull request. And uh, then came the state machine implementation. And uh, this turned out to be even easier because uh, at first it was just a new class with uh, no touch points to the application. But then came the hard part, which is uh, migrating all the actions. And uh, yeah, it, it, uh, it uh, wasn't so trivial how to do because what we had to do is uh, we had this uh, ride repository, which was a monolith of a class containing uh, all the ride uh, features such as start ride, pause ride, and ride resume ride. And uh, what we had to do is uh, take those and uh, for each of those create a separate action uh, implementation to our new uh, ride state machine framework. And uh, once, uh, once uh, that is done, uh, only then uh, can we get rid of the ride repository. And uh, yeah, this, this transition uh, would obviously be uh, too hard, too complex, too big to uh, do it one step in a single pull request. So we, we had to uh, come up with uh, something for that. And the uh, first option is just to use a feature toggle or some kind of config. Uh, I guess uh, almost everybody at some point uh, used uh, this technique uh, what it is for is it uh, allows you to ship some binary that uh, that is not being used by a user. And uh, how it uh, is usually implemented is by just uh, adding some uh, branches like if statements to your code. And uh, it can work really well if uh, you are introducing a new feature and you want to hide this new feature uh, from a set of users but it can be hard to, to use when you're not adding a new feature, but you are kind of modifying an existing one. Uh, you either have to add a lot of if statements to your code, or you either have to introduce a really smart abstraction layer uh, f hiding the two behaviors. And uh, you can introduce uh, additional risks just by doing uh, either of those. So what we ended up doing was uh, a simple trick that we later refer to as uh, hacking. And, uh, and uh, how it worked uh, is that it allowed us to uh, have these two components uh, coexist. And uh, we introduced these pair of callbacks that uh, uh, what they would do is that whenever the state uh, would change in one of these components, uh, uh, the callbacks would make sure that uh, the state is updated in the other one as well, making sure that uh, both of these components have the up-to-date uh, state all the time. And uh, what it allowed us to do is to uh, migrate uh, these actions one by one because uh, it, it allowed us to have uh, this kind of intermediate uh, uh, state, but the state is now becoming a overused word. Uh, so we could have uh, one subset of the actions uh, already implemented to the state machine, but uh, the rest of them still uh, in the old repository class and uh, it would uh, still work. And uh, yeah, what it allowed us to do is to eventually migrate the actions uh, one by one and uh, then finally get rid of the the old repository uh, class and, and these uh, dirty callbacks. And uh, yeah, uh, this is how we did it. Uh, and uh, to talk about the outcome a bit, uh, it was uh, successful. We uh, managed to pull it off with uh, just a series of a uh, lot of uh, small pull requests. And uh, during that time, there were no increase, increase in uh, crashes or uh, failure rates. And uh, as a bonus, it allowed us to uh, implement follow-up improvements uh, effortlessly. 
for example, when we wanted to do some kind of uh, caching for our state handling, it was just a matter of adding a, a few new lines to our code. So, uh, but uh, seemed like a monster at the beginning. We could we could uh, just uh, tame it step by step. So, so that was it. That uh, that is how we did it. I would leave you with uh, some takeaways. Uh, first is that. Whenever you are doing uh, any kind of uh, state handling, it's a good idea and almost a crucial step to take a step back and think about what kind of uh, state you are dealing with, uh, uh, set up a scope or a boundary for your state handling and, and have a clear separation what goes into it and what is, not, uh, what is outside. And uh, yeah, next one is uh, if you are doing really any kind of huge refactor, uh, plan for incremental introduction, because in most of the cases, uh, that's, that's uh, not just the best way, but the only way to actually do it. And uh, finally, educate uh, developers on the usage, uh, especially if you have uh, some kind of temporary items that you don't want to be abused. So uh, thank you for the attention. And uh, if you have some questions, I am happy to answer them.